Sergeant Bill Meade had gotten a ride into town from Camp Downing. But as the car approached the Lane Farm, on a sudden impulse, Bill asked the driver to stop and, thanking him for the lift, got out. The young man hesitated for a moment, then walked on up to the farmhouse. A light was on in the parlor. Through the window, he could see Aunt Mary sitting at the desk. She was alone. Watching her, Bill had occasion to remember many talks they had had in the past. Conversations that would have prevented all this heartache if he had only heeded her advice. Perhaps he thought, perhaps she could help him now. And a few minutes later, Bill sat, somewhat embarrassed, in Aunt Mary's parlor. Uh, I'm sorry to barge in like this. Were you busy? No. I was just writing a letter to my son. I can finish it later. Oh. Uh, is... Is Peggy here? No, she's gone into town for the evening. Oh. Mm-hmm. 
Well, I really wanted to talk to you. And I'm glad you came by, Bill. I was hoping you would one of these days. Well, I was on my way home from camp, so I... Well, I thought I'd take the chance. I thought I'd take the chance. I thought I'd take the chance. Well, I didn't know if you'd even seen Are you still living at... Yeah. Yeah, I'm staying on there. And uh, how... I imagine she's enjoying lovely there. Yeah, yeah, she... She says it is. Have you had any supper yet? Supper? No. But I don't want to. Well, eat. my lance on you got to eat. Let me fix you something. No, no, thanks, Ann Mary. I'll eat when I get into town. Wouldn't take a minute. No, thanks, just the same. I'm not very hungry. <laughs> well, now that I'm here, I don't know what to say. Oh, I believe I know why you did stop by. You want to talk about Peggy, don't you? Yeah. I saw her a few days ago. Did she tell you about it? Yes, she told me, Bill. She also told me that she'd seen you several times since Kit left. Yeah. You think that was wrong, don't you? Well, under the circumstances, yes. Well, you don't have to worry about that anymore, Aunt Mary. Peggy's through with me. What about you, Bill? I love her, Aunt Mary. You believe that, don't you? Yes, I believe it. She doesn't. She thinks I've been dishonest with her. Insincere. But I haven't. Probably the decent thing would be for me to let things stand as they are, but I... I just can't. In other words, you want her love. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. You aren't free, Bill. (laughs) Don't I know it. But if Peggy will only have faith in me. You see, Aunt Mary, Peggy thinks the worst about me now because I told her I didn't think we should see each other. But I had to tell her that. It wasn't fair to her not to. Won't you talk to her, Aunt Mary? Peggy already knows how I feel, Bill. I told her I don't think you've deceived her or that you've been dishonest. I see. But she doesn't agree with you, is that it? That seems to be it. Then you won't help me? I won't influence Peggy, if that's what you want me to do. She has to do her own thinking. You can't keep her lights and plans suspended. I'm not asking her to do that. I just want to know... I'm sure, in spite of the things she said, I'm sure she must still feel... And I'm afraid she'll try to destroy it. Can't kill an honest emotion. True feeling. I wish I could believe that. Aunt Mary, isn't there anything that can be done? Bill, you have to work out your own problems regardless of Peggy. Until you get your own life straightened out, there's nothing more that can be done. If Peggy wants to wait, if she wants to hope, that's her affair. But I don't think you have any right, Bill, to make any emotional demands on her or to expect anything from her for the time being. Sergeant Bill Meade didn't say anything. In his heart, he had known all along that Aunt Mary would talk to him just as she did. She could hold out no hope for him. And as Bill made his way into town, two people sat chatting over after-dinner coffee in the coffee shop at the Brown Palace Hotel. Peggy and the young man in his early 30s, Nicholas Dorn, the writer who had been Wakefield on a special assignment. That couple sitting over there? Uh Uh-huh. You mean he's really jealous of his wife? It's true. He can't go any place alone, not even to the grocery store. Well, that's very charming, but it's very peculiar. He must be in their late 70s, both of them. Yes, but you see, his first wife ran away with another man. And when Mr. Dawson married a second time, they say he swore it wouldn't happen again. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think he'd be able to relax a little now. After all. (laughs) You would think so. That's a wonderful story. But you see, Peggy, there you have it again. It's not love that makes Mr. What's-His-Name feel he doesn't ever want to let his wife out of his sight. It's the result of hurt pride, resentment. Oh, let's not get started on that subject again tonight, Nicholas. I'm having much too good a time. I don't know when I've had so much fun. Well, I'm flattered that there doesn't seem to be anything very startling or unusual about this evening. Maybe not. But 
to be with someone to talk and laugh. Is that so revolutionary for you, Peggy? Don't tell me you lead the life of a recluse. Well, I guess I have been, sort of. Why? An attractive young girl like you. Oh, I've had my problems. I see. I remember now. You hinted at something of that sort the other night. <laughs> so you have your problems. No, no, I had them. Now you're perfectly well adjusted. Of course. That's why you can take that superior tone with me. What? I'm remembering the lecture you read me the other night. You really gave me what for, you know. Oh, I didn't. I told you I agreed on the whole with all your theories about love. I just said I thought you were defeated by it. Well, when you've gone through what I have, it's pretty smashing to the ego. It also just plain hurts. Particularly when you put all your eggs in one basket. You've been naive enough to believe that two people can be everything to each other and all that sort of bunk. But the trouble is, Nicholas, you don't know how to relinquish anything. That sounds very profound. Is that how you achieved your indifference? Yes. When someone disappointed you, someone you loved very much, it's hard to let go, to give up the idea that it's hopeless. But if you can just do that, what? Oh, what is it? Peggy. Hello, Peggy. Hello. Well, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. Nicholas, this is Sergeant Bill Mead. This is Mr. Dillon. How do you do? Hello. Uh, well, I guess they have a table for me. So, uh, glad to have met you, Mr. Dorn. Thank you. Goodbye, Peggy. Goodbye, Bill. Well? Let's go. But what about the design? I don't want to. Please, Nicholas, let's get out of here. All right, as soon as I can catch your eye and get the check. Sergeant Bill Mead, huh? Does he represent your disappointment? Yes. You were talking so big, Miss Douglas, without having learned how to relinquish. I know. You still love him, don't you? One-sided love never gets you any place. Please, can't we go? And a few minutes later, Bill Mead saw Peggy and the stranger get up. Saw her put her arm through his as they walked out of the coffee shop. Bill remembered something Aunt Mary had said. That Peggy couldn't keep her life suspended. Yes, it certainly looked as if she were doing something about it. As if she were making a fresh start. Sitting there, Bill wondered, why didn't he just give up? It was all so useless. So utterly useless. 